art scene in Odessa is thriving. Since 2014, the city has seen the addition of new murals, sculptures, and installations that have attracted world-class talent to the heart of the Permian Basin. They choose here, and I think it's because we've created an environment that fosters the growth of artists and makes artists want to have their work showcased in our public art collection. The process of choosing some of the talent behind the feature pieces you'll see driving down the street doesn't come easy. It's through a selection committee and lengthy process that a final decision is made. We treat every public art opportunity just like a job opening and you have to apply and we put that call out nationwide so it is open to anyone to apply. One artist lucky enough to secure the side of a blank building is Greg Gossel. He traveled all the way from Wisconsin to put his artistic ability to work in a place he had never been before. I was psyched, yeah. Um, I was really excited to come out, and it was a, a perfect wall for a mural, so just the, the combo of, of getting to visit a new city, getting to get out to West Texas, and, and having a really cool um, canvas to, to paint a mural on was, was perfect for me. Given that Odessa wasn't home for Greg, timing and how long it would take to complete the project played a factor. Luckily, he had a pretty streamlined process. It starts with taking the design and I project it at night and then I kind of create a rough outline to get my proportions down. And then after that, it's just painting, you know, sun up, to sun down, basically um, filling everything in and then detailing it all. He says a lot of the inspiration that went into his design not only came from his drive to Odessa from Dallas, but also through months of extensive research. The same can be said for South Florida artist Ernesto Morane, known for his work on the mural title Ferdinand. It garnered national attention recently when it took home regional gold at the 2023 National Mural Awards, but the final masterpiece didn't come without some tough decisions. I like to go big, you know, um, in, in the design and fit in as much of the animal as I can onto the wall. But the building was more uh, narrow and long. So what I did was I went with an anamorphic design, which pretty much is, um, it's, it's kind of like a, an illusion. So I painted it right on the corner of the building so I was able to get the longhorn as big as I can using the anamorphic technique. Artists like Ernesto have all come to the city with one goal in mind, to transform a bland piece of architecture into something of meaning to those who pass by it daily. It draws you in, no matter who you are. If you're a kid, you know, as you get older, no matter who you are, something interesting will always be something interesting. So um, a lot of different reactions you get to see from um, just transforming a space. And it's not just murals making a statement across the city. Everyday objects have also become a blank canvas for local artists to let their imagination flow onto. One of my favorite things is the traffic boxes that dot the entire landscape of Odessa. There are about 137. So what we did was we took those and we asked local artists to submit designs, usually graphic designers, and then we have them printed on vinyl and installed. Regardless of your income, regardless of where you live, regardless of your job, you get to see a piece of art and have some civic pride. Now, if you're a local artist looking to get more involved in the Odessa arts community, you can subscribe to publicartist.org and every time they put out a call looking for artists to bring new work to the area, you'll be notified. Randy says they usually get between 50 and 100 artists that apply for a number of different opportunities. So be patient, but the work is definitely out there. In studio, Matt Fonts, ABC Big Two News.